Oh. And that's a wrap. And I'm back. Still alive. By the way, well, let me shut this thing off. Oh. Oh. Catch my breath too. Thank you to everybody who sent messages of concern while I was sick. It, uh, <laughs> I'm out of breath. I just did 45 minutes on um, my Peloton treadmill with my weighted vest. You can see the H1 in the background there. Um, I got knocked on my ass from uh, COVID. Confirmed, I took a few tests, always positive. And uh, that basically hit me on, uh, what was it, January 29th. It was the day before, <laughs> funny enough, my birthday. And uh, hit me pretty hard. And I ended up laying down on my couch in my living room. Oh, I gotta take this vest off. And um, yeah, basically by the following day, my birthday, I was just wiped right out you guys like in bed sick as a dog when i say sick i'll give you the symptoms my symptoms were severe headache severe body aches very very low energy and i'll give you an idea of how low my energy was i am not the type of person that can just stand still i always need to be moving you know my wife always jokes about how you know she wants to go on a family Vacation. This thing's heavy. Whew. Going on a family vacation, but this guy can't sit still. So we always debate on like what type of family vacation we potentially want to go on. So anyhow, I was in bed from that day, the 30th through the 31st, the first, the second, and then on the 3rd of February, I finally started moving around a little bit. And then it was, uh, I think the 6th, I was feeling pretty good. And it wasn't until, I think it was the 6th or the 7th, that I finally took yet another test and tested negative for COVID. That was actually my second time having it, but uh, this time was definitely worse for me in the sense of just low energy in that. Anyhow, point is, that's why I haven't been in any of the vlogs. That's why I haven't been in any of the stories, videos, or anything. Um, feels good to be healthy, man. You don't realize, and I'll tell you, anyone who's healthy, anyone who's young, especially, you really have no idea how much you take your health for granted until you have no energy and you can't move, you can't do anything, and you're basically bedridden. And understand that my flu type illness, the coronavirus that I had, that variant, is nothing compared to what a lot of people are going through. So I still felt extremely grateful while I was sick. Now, I'm back. As of uh, about five days ago, I started getting myself back uh, out here doing light exercising. I did some walking on the treadmill and I started running. I've been running for several days now. Got back into lifting some weights and I'm feeling 100% I'm happy to report. So uh, yeah, I'm at home. I plan on getting my butt back down to California um, in a couple of days. This bad boy, I actually just finished cleaning. Let me show you this thing. This thing looks good clean. It looks awful when there's dirt on it. And I'll tell you, with these tires, which are oversized, that stick out a little further like that, it really just sprays dirt like off the tire, it sprays all down the side of this truck, on the mirror, on the windows, everywhere. All down the back, because the back's the same. And it uh, drives me nuts. But uh, I took some time yesterday and cleaned it all up. And damn, Hummer H1 looks good. Now, I got some big updates for you guys, uh, which I believe I'm probably making the title and thumbnail on this. But I'm gonna go inside, get a little bit of food, and uh, change, shower, and get out of this sweaty clothing. And I'm going to tell you guys some major updates on the 720 GTR. Stick around. All right. So 720 update, you guys. The 720 GTR 
got shipped, if you didn't know, from California back to Canada. And the main reason for that was when we started asking questions with the body shops around Southern California um, that were Lamborghini, or sorry, McLaren certified to work on that car, the biggest issue came back to the fact that there were some very specific modifications on that car that nobody was willing to replicate or try to even attempt, which the number one thing was that. livery we had painted on the car, my version of the Lark livery. And that paint, first of all, was really hard to get. We had it formulated. So it just came down to the simple conclusion that we really needed to um, have that transported back to Canada, back to Fast Track Auto Body in Richmond, and that they would have the best shot at assessing the damage and making up you know an estimate proposal to the insurance company to have that car basically rebuilt in the state that it was you know damaged in um there are no guarantees that uh the insurance companies want to going to want to cover things like the custom paint job and stuff like that but we're going to have to wait and see so where we are right now is we shipped it back we waited probably the better part of three weeks or a month or something like that just to find out if the frame was bent because we didn't know and it turns out that once they got that car onto the rack is i guess they call it the rack which is what is essentially um a, f a frame that's aligned perfectly to the stock frame and has all these like pins that go into these placements on the stock frame of the mclaren 720s and if it all lines up and nothing is not going into the right, obviously, hole, then uh, they declare that the frame is not bent. The phenomenal news here is the frame is not bent. Just last week, they put it on there and checked it all, and it seems to be A-OK. -okay. Now, the list of parts needed to fix that car are obviously going to be very expensive. The, the car has not a traditional, like, coilover type spring suspension it has a hydraulic suspension. That's what one of the really unique high technology things about this you know, McLaren product is. It's got this really cool hydraulic suspension. Unfortunately, that rear quarter uh, of the car was damaged and long story short, that part of the suspension is broken. So they're gonna have to replace that. Now, I don't really know what's involved with that hydraulic suspension. I just know it's not gonna be cheap. So depending on the size of the estimate to even repair the car, uh, could be that the dollar figure could exceed what the insurance company would be willing to pay to repair it. They could uh, write this thing off and uh, we could end up with basically some form of a payout to essentially try to go and rebuild that car or maybe we could even buy that car back. You know, typically as the owner of a vehicle, you get first right of refusal. So that's where we're at. Um, the next step is to basically get an estimate from uh, Fast Track, get to insurance, get insurance to approve something, and then we'll give you guys another update. It's heartbreaking, you know, to be honest. Like, I love that car. I put my all my ideas, blood, sweat, and tears, time into getting that thing built. It was painstakingly to get it all done. It took three years, and uh, that seems to be the magic number on this channel for building cars. Three years for some reason. <laughs> As soon as we have basically an option from insurance, then we'll be able to talk to you guys and say, hey, these, these are our options or this is our one option that we're being presented and uh, this is how we're gonna move forward. I would love to be able to rebuild that car. The downside is no matter what we do, putting that livery back on the car may not happen. I don't know yet. That is really the biggest question mark. Rebuilding that car, if we rebuild it, it's not, it's not, that's not a big deal. Um, they're just McLaren parts for the most part and a few Vorsteiner parts. But putting that livery back on the car, I mean, that paint job, when I say it was a pain in my ass to do, that's an understatement. So that's where we're at with the 720. Family's jumping in the uh, G-Wagon. We're going to go out for like a little pre-Valentine's Day dinner with uh, my wife and my daughter and the dogs. 
and uh, I think they're all sitting in the vehicle. I'm not sure. Are you just waiting for me? Yeah. Okay. Everybody's waiting for me. Everybody's inside the truck. So I have some more news about the Mercy Lago. So after dinner, when I get back, I'm going to bring you guys into a little conversation about that. Because I have crazy news about that. We actually got a payout for that vehicle. And we still have the vehicle. All right. Back from our little Valentine's Day dinner. And Presley, what did you get? All sorts of stuff? Yeah, I opened early Valentine's Day. Early? Look at this. Your little bag, a whole bunch of chocolates and sweets, other chocolates and sweets, a notebook, notebook mushroom your little pen. mushroom pencil. I love mushroom. Presley no, loves no. drawing and crafting like these little mushrooms, like the one that like Toad out of like Mario Kart or something. They're so cute. Anyhow, what I was going to share with you guys was a brief update on the Murcielago. Seems like it's been forever. That's because it has been. It's almost been a year since that car was initially crashed. So <clears throat> what it's happened is it just took a long time of back and forth with the insurance company to come to a resolution on uh, a value for that car. It was at this weird place in the marketplace where cars were going up and up and up and up in value so quickly. And at the same time, cars like, that were the real classics, the real collectors were also, you know, appreciating at quite crazy rates. Some not as much as others, but for example, my manual LP640 was actually increasing in value quite rapidly. And so it was hard to keep up and have that car constantly reappraised every two months, you know, for a new assessed value. So at the time of the accident, when it got crashed, it had not been appraised or reassessed its value, you know, in the marketplace for several months, which became a bit of a crossroads and a problem between what we thought it was worth and what the insurance company thought it was worth. Eventually we got that sorted out and they cut us a check and we got to keep the car. So how that works is we kept the car and said, Hey, we'll fix it. Just pay us out a sum of money in order to be able to, uh, correct the obviously the damage that was done to it so it wasn't nearly as much money as we really should have got for the car however we got a little less than uh what did we get four hundred and sixty five thousand dollars canadian so you'd have to do the exchange rate there's about a 34 percent uh you know lesser amount uh if you were to convert that into us dollars long story short i have the stock front bumper, the OEM front bumper, the rear bumper, the stock OEM wheels sitting here at my house. In fact, I'll show you. We'll just take a little stroll down my hallway here and it's actually in my attached garage. It's been sitting here for years since we moved into this house. I've had this stuff kind of just dragging around with me. So the question I ask you guys is, do we basically take the car and convert it back to a stock format, it's really worth its most money on the market in its stock format. So completely stock LP640 with a manual gearbox, not the fake, you know, uh, SV style stuff. So right here, you can see the G right here, just down these stairs, we have this little panel that, which was already there when we moved into this home. That is, I believe that should be, yes. I believe that's the stock front bumper. That's the rear bottom portion by the looks of it. And that piece a little further up, I believe is part of the diffuser. And then, and there's a few other little bits and pieces in there. I think there's even, funny enough, I think that's like the stock fenders, those black fenders. Those are the stock fenders from the uh, the old Aperta because we put the, the Vorsteiner really cool louvered carbon fenders on. And here are the stock wheels dirty and dusty and they've been sitting here forever, these bad boys. Now, that's actually an 18 inch wheel. The stock factory wheel on the LP640 uh, or Mercia Lagos was an 18 inch wheel. It's quite small, quite small, but a very unique design. I'm actually, a, I'm a fan of those wheels. I have those sitting here. I got those with the car because the owner actually had these on, these HREs. 
So if you're an OG subscriber and you remember when I took delivery of the manual Murcielago just out front of Protective Film Solutions, it came with those HREs on it at the time. And then they just shipped me the other stock wheels. So I'm torn because I have to make a decision. Do I put it back to OEM and have the most value in the car? It's not going to look very crazy. It'll look like a stock Murcielago, but the real gem is the gated gearbox. And I would get the most out of it eventually if I ever sold it. Or do we invest the money and buy some aftermarket you know, kit or something crazy and make it crazy. And then it's never going to be worth really all that much money. I mean, it'll always be worth more than a e-gear Murcielago, but it just won't be like that collector value. So I guess that's my choice at the moment because once I go down this road, either making it OEM or making it crazy, crazy, there is probably no real going back. Like there's just, there wouldn't be a point. So it's a tough decision, you guys. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say in the comments below. Um, you know, maybe, maybe you say put it back to OEM and uh, sell it. You know, maybe that's, maybe that's what I do. You know, maybe at this point I sell it, try to get the most I can out of that car, take that money and invest it into something, you know, crazier for another project, something that's more invested in the entertainment side for you guys. And, you know, for me, quite honestly, I love all the cars. People always ask me what's my favorite car. It really depends on the day. They all create a different experience. And as much as I love my manually gated Murcielago, I think I had a lot of good years with it. And I think if I made it OEM and could get a decent amount of money for it and make a decent little profit on that car, I think I'd be pretty satisfied. Yeah, I'd probably miss it. Just like the Carrera GT, I miss that car. Beautiful car. But there were a lot of times when it just wasn't fun to drive. Like. Driving it on the daily was really challenging because if you get into any sort of slow first gear or stop and go traffic, it's just not an easy car to drive, which makes it not that much fun after a while, especially if you're stuck in traffic for an hour in LA. So do I go OEM, you know, sell the car and invest it into something else? Or do we take it and go completely bananas and bash it crazy and modify it and make it something no one's ever going to do to a manual LP640. Um, there is a car across the pond in the UK from a gentleman by, the, by, I believe his name is Phil Morrison. I believe I'm saying that right. I apologize if I got your name, last name wrong. Uh, he took an e-gear LP640, converted it to a manual, and then got the, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right either, Reitinger, it's a German, I believe German company that did GT1 wide body racing with Lamborghini Murcielagos. And he took that wide body kit and completely fabbed it to fit onto the Murcielago. Now it's an even bigger job than what we essentially just did with the race kit on the Huracan because nothing, and when I mean nothing, nothing comes close to even fitting a little bracket to the OEM fitment like the Huracan did. It wasn't that far off. For the Mercy, you're relocating all sorts of stuff. I heard like, you know, something to do with like the steering rack, power power steering pumps and all sorts of stuff has to be moved. So anyhow, if we were gonna do something crazy, I think I'd wanna do the kit Phil has on. I'm gonna see if I can find a photo and I'll stick it right here. And well, yeah, you guys can see how crazy that is. That is a one of one truly in the world street driven GT1 kitted car with a manual gearbox. If I could get said kit and put it on my car, should I? Let me know. Anyhow, I'll be back. I'll be back in the vlogs this week. Thank you again for all the kind messages and thanks for watching today's story vlog. It was a little on the simpler side, but you guys got a couple of updates out of it. I'll see you guys all soon. Peace.